Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I am the pastor here at Walden Community Church, and we are in Montgomery, Texas. And we're going through the entire book of Revelation. Yep, that's right. Every single chapter, line by line, just a little bit here, a little bit there, uh, breaking it all down just so that it's a nice, easy to understand, bite-sized chunks. And so every single one of these uh, little videos only a couple of minutes long, maybe 10, 12 minutes at the most. Uh, we are now in Revelation chapter 14. All of these videos are numbered, right? They're numbered and they tell you exactly what part you're at, what chapter and verse you're at. And so if there's a particular verse in Revelation that you're trying to study, you can go back and find that particular video that addresses that. Or you can go all the way back to the beginning and, and start this from scratch and go through this in order. Or just crack your Bible open and start right here with us. We're right in the middle of Revelation 14, starting at verse 6. It says, Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. So remember, we have two sides squaring off. We have our chapter 13 side of people who've taken the mark, and then we have our chapter 14 side, uh, the 144,000, those who follow Christ. And we have this angel that kind of does a flyover over that, over that scene, and this angel proclaims the eternal gospel, this message that God's grace is available to all, right? That, the eternal gospel is the story of the Bible. The eternal gospel is the story that uh, it doesn't matter what you've done or that you think that you might have broken the relationship with God or that you might have offended God or sinned. Uh, that God loves us enough. He loves us so much that he pays our debt and we get to live with him in eternity. We get to live with him in heaven. And so this is, this is like a, a last hurrah. Right? This is just a, it's just a, a one more time offering to tell the world, hey, God is ready to forgive you. And so there's this worldwide proclamation that goes out. But notice the first thing this angel says, fear God and give him glory. Right? The hour of judgment has come. And think about those words, fear God and give him glory. How, how often do you read those words in the Bible, fear God, right? We should fear God or, or, or have that kind of, that, that image of God in our brain. And, and I've heard pastors say, well, it doesn't really mean be afraid of God. It doesn't mean that. It means respect him, right? It means revere him. But the problem I have with that is respect and revere don't seem to go far enough. I think there's a lot of things that we respect. There are people that we respect, okay? This is to fear God. Okay, let's just say this happened right now. Okay, let's just say you go outside and you hear the angel, this worldwide proclamation, fear God and give him glory. And you got your car keys out, you're ready to get in your car and drive off to work or to the grocery store. Do you just stop and go, eh? And just go right back to doing what you're doing. Just go right back to going to work. Go right back to making a trip to the grocery store. Got to get gas, right? Fear God and give him glory. The hour of judgment has come. This is a wake-up call, right? Don't return to your old life. This, this, this is a warning for everybody. Fear God means respect, absolutely. But it, it's a disservice to stop right there. And to say that it only means respect. It means that you are going to give God all of your worship and all of your life, all of your days. That you are going to serve him. That you do not serve humanity. You do not follow and serve and give earthly uh, worship and respect to human leaders the way we do to God. There's just no, there's just no way. It is more than respect. This, this, is, this is fear because it says the hour of judgment has come, which means there's, there's, there's no more time. 
Time's run out. This is the end, right? You either, you fear God and you give him glory right now. Absolutely. Matthew 10, uh, 28, Jesus says, do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Jesus says, rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Jesus says it. Don't, don't try to take his words and say, well, he really meant respect. He really meant revere. He says, no, fear God because he can destroy you. He can cast you into hell. And this angel comes and says, this is it. This is the hour that Jesus was speaking about. Life is not about you. I know we, we uh, travel this earth and we try to find the answer, the meaning to life. What's, you know, what's the meaning to the universe? What's the meaning to my existence? I, I'll tell you what, it's not you. Okay, it's not you. There is only one God. There is only one King. There is only one Messiah. We worship Him. We worship God. And we don't fear anything else. We don't have to fear anything going on in the world. We don't have to fear any outside nation. We don't have to fear any outside government. We don't have to fear any inside government. We don't have to fear any man-made villain or any man-made uh, anything, right? There, we don't have to give them any more time or respect than they humanly deserve. This angel warns the world, fear God and give him glory. Verse eight says, another angel, a second follows, saying fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She who made all nations drink the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality. All right, so who's that? Who is Babylon? Well, who, who is Babylon? You gotta think about uh, Babylon in the Bible and who the Babylonians were. They were the villain, right? They were the bad guys. They uh, were the enemies of Israel. They took Israel captive, made Israel worship other gods, right? And so somehow this new Babylon that's being talked about, this is a, this is a nation. This is a country or a government, right? This is, this is a, 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 a nation of influence that is very seductive, very alluring, that lures the rest of the world. Other nations find her so beautiful, they want to be like her. Other nations find what they do to be so attractive, they want to copy them and be like them, right? She who made all nations drink the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality, her allure. Verse 9 says, And another angel, a third, followed them, saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and its image and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he also will drink the wine of God's wrath, poured full strength into the cup of his anger, and he will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever, and they have no rest, day or night, these worshipers of the beast and its image, and whoever receives the mark of its name. Let's be totally clear. This is a warning. This is a warning for everybody, not just uh, pagans or non-believers, okay? Don't you dare take the mark. Don't you dare. You won't, yes, you won't be able to buy, you won't be able to sell, but this passage says there's no going back. You take this mark and you will go to hell. Don't, and, and this is, you know, where you raise your hand and say, yeah, but what about this? What about this? And, you know, isn't God forgiving? Doesn't God show compassion? You know, what if? Okay, this passage doesn't have a contingent. This passage doesn't have a what if. I, I can't say I'm not God, right? I'd like to think God is forgiving and understanding and compassionate, but this passage is a real and direct Warning, those who take the mark will receive the full strength of God's anger, it says. The full strength of God's anger. This is, this is why we read Revelation. This is why we are making ourselves aware, preparing ourselves. We need to know. We need to know and we need to make other people aware, right? And, and look, the mark of the beast, I know people say, I'd never take it, right? I'd never take it. 
it's, it's not going to just appear overnight. It's not just going to be like one day there's no mark and the next day there is. It's not going to be like uh, it's labeled, right? This is the mark of the beast. And you're like, aha, see, I'm not going to take it. No, it's going to happen gradually. This is going to happen over time. The world is going to get you ready to take it because people will want to take it. They will willingly take it, gladly take it. So they're going to sneak this into your life and prepare you and get you ready. The world will make you afraid. The world will make you angry. The world will make you distrust other people. And in the end, millions of people will willingly take it. I think about the times we're living in right now. People are mad. People are frustrated. Okay, but we are mad and frustrated about the wrong things. Satan wants to distract you from the mission. What is Satan's number one goal? To divide. To split. To put a line between. To pull people apart. To pull people to an aside. To get you off center, off mark, right? And, and so we have, we have a message, we have a directive. As Christians, as the church, we, our, miss, our mission is to get the gospel out, to take the gospel out and to resist, right? To resist, to, to know the difference between heaven and hell and to proclaim that message. And, and the only fighting that we should be doing is against the powers of darkness. The only fighting we should be doing is against the devil and his schemes. We don't have time to fight over stupid stuff, okay? We just don't. When you stand before God, you will have to give God an account of the gospel you preached, the message you preached, the things you did, okay? The work you did. I know it's hard. I know it's hard to do the right thing. I know it's hard to fight against evil, but God says resist evil. Stay pure, right? The beginning of chapter 14 says, these people are going to be the people that didn't receive the mark and that stayed pure. And verse 12 says, here is a call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. This, this is who the 144,000 will be. People who are patient. People who have incredible endurance. They didn't take the mark, even when it was difficult. But what if they say, well, you can, if you don't take the mark, you'll go to jail. All right, then you're going to jail. They say, well, well we, you don't take the mark or, or, or you're going to be killed. All right, then you're going to be killed. If you don't take the mark, we're going to kill your family. All right, then you're going to kill my family. We can't say, well, what if this and what if that? You know, God doesn't want me to die. God doesn't want me to be unhappy. God doesn't want me to, to starve or God doesn't want my family to starve. Look, there's no out clause in this passage. The call is to patience. The call is to endurance, no matter what. We keep the commandments of God, like verse 12 says, we keep the commandments of God and we keep our faith in Jesus. And then the reward is next. And then I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. That's the blessing. That's the blessing. That's the promise. Jesus said in Matthew 25, 40, the king will come back and the king will say, truly I tell you, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters, you did for me, right? That's why we endure. That's why we are patient. That's why we keep our words pure. That's why we keep the relationship between God and us pure. We do it for our king. We do it for our savior. We do it for the Messiah. We do it for Jesus. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.